Okay, okay. next we're going to uh, talk about AI and photography, and we're getting a little feedback, aren't we? So, no? Okay. All right, and if this meeting had been another two weeks in the future, we would have had probably a three-hour program, because it seems like every day when I uh, either log into email uh, or watch something on television, there's always some sort of an article or posting about AI, how good it is, how bad it is, how ugly it is, um, kind of a mixture. So uh, tonight what I want to just do is kind of go down some rabbit holes, and maybe out of some rabbit holes, and uh, talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly um, with uh, AI and photography and art, for that matter. Uh, I've been interested in artificial intelligence probably since the 90s. And Abby didn't read my uh, bio, but for those who were here last time, um, when we talked about 52 frames, she mentioned that I was a square dance caller at one time, which I was, I admit. <laughs> and um, part of the group I danced with or worked with uh, were MIT students. Uh, and many of those uh, worked in the artificial intelligence lab at um, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And after dances, we would sit around for several hours um, chatting about different things, usually things that didn't make sense, like uh, if your legs bent the other way, what would stairs look like? <laughs> okay, but uh, we also got into some real good discussions about artificial intelligence. And I'm still friends with many of these people. And um, they're pretty much amazed with how things have changed. Uh, from way back then. So uh, we're just going to take a look at a lot of different things and uh, see how we do it. So. Okay, so I guess I'm going to start with a, uh, a warning message. Um, the views expressed in this presentation are the opinions of the presenter. Uh, don't necessarily reflect the opinions or standards of Grand Rapids Camera Club. So uh, hopefully... Uh, we'll clarify some things and maybe in the future that's a discussion that we might have to have about uh, how AI is going to affect or affect the uh, the camera club itself. Did you say effect? In fact, <laughs> effect. In fact, too, yeah. Okay. Um, I called on William Shakespeare uh, to kind of introduce the program tonight. Oh, photographers, lend me your ear. For a tale of technology new and clear, of AI, the tool that doth enhance and bring it forth a photographic dance. Some may say, nay, my skills are rare, I need not this new fangled affair. But hear me now, dear friends of the lens, AI doth bring it benefits without end. It canst correcteth colors, sharpen lines, and maketh images into divine shrines. It canst identify the potential of every tree, and bringeth forth beauty for all to see. Let not pride be a barrier to progress, for AI can bringeth forth wonders no less. Embrace this tool, and open up thy mind, for with it, photographic art shall be refined. So let us, with thy camera in hand, explore this new frontier of this land. For with AI, we canst attain a level of art that is truly insane. Yay. You guys, you guys didn't know that I was uh, a poet, did you? Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't see my advance button here, so. Okay, there we go. Uh, that was actually a poem written by uh, Chet GPT. And if any of you have been following uh, AI uh, on the news or online, um, Chet GPT is causing all kinds of fun, all kinds of discussion. Um, so basically what I did was I said, um, write a poem in Shakespearean style about the benefits of artificial intelligence in uh, photography and art. So, uh, and 
The Voice uh, was actually edited by my son who lives in Taiwan. Um, he's an AI junkie also, a musician and artist. Um, and the voice I had was kind of funky, so he did some work on it and found William Shakespeare and uh, kind of worked his, his magic there. So um, we, I asked an expert, again, Chad GBT, uh, about what AI is, and you can see here it stands for artificial intelligence, uh, and it's the ability of computers uh, to perform tasks that normally would require human intelligence. And as you can see, you know, it's used in healthcare, finance, uh, retail, manufacturing, transportation, education, which um, I've been in education for way too many years, over 50, and um, I can see some real potential even in education for, for AI. And of course, entertainment, which is where we uh, get into the photography and the art uh, aspect. So. Okay, so um, as I said, we've heard lots of, lots of good things, lots of bad things about AI. Um, you can see some clips that I've taken online over the last, uh, last several weeks. Um, Yes, Chat GPT did pass the medical licensing exam. Uh, also, got received a B on a paper for MBA at uh, at Wharton. Um, the top right there, everybody's cheating. Uh, why this teacher has adopted an open Chat GPT policy? Um, you really don't want students using Chat GPT perhaps to, to write papers, but certainly to organize a paper, uh, to do research. Um, I find myself using it quite a bit to, to kind of get started. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Corner, or Cornerstone College, uh, just last week I would think it was, uh, had a conference on being human and artificial intelligence. And uh, the other one that I found was, was kind of interesting was that autonomous cars, the ones that drive themselves, um, have problems uh, spotting people with darker skin. And I love to tan, so I, uh, I stay away from the, uh, the Teslas right now, so. What's that? Okay. Um, also, uh, you know, it's chat GPT and artificial intelligence um, does occasionally get some, some stuff wrong. Uh, on the left here, uh, it's talking about the world record for walking across the English Channel. You don't know there was a world record, was there? Uh, there isn't. Okay. But somebody asked what the world record for walking across the English Channel was. And chat GPT actually came up with an answer for him. So it doesn't always get it right. Uh, the top right there, um, chat GPT told me what to make for dinner. Uh, here's what it said. Actually, what it said was, I'm not familiar with what ingredients you have in the house, but I can suggest popular meals that have been looked up online. So uh, some, some fun stuff goes on with chat GPT. So. No, as far as uh, in, in photography, um, there's some controversy about AI, but uh, really AI is really helping us as far as photo editing. Uh, many cameras use AI. Uh, if you shoot with a cell phone, uh, you're using AI also in the cell phone. So it really does uh, affect some things. So what are some of the negative effects? Um, again, this came from ChatGPT and uh, a loss of originality. Um, bias and stereotypes can come in, uh, independence on technology, but I think you know now with digital photography, um, we're pretty much dependent on technology anyway for our editing and so on. Uh, there are some ethical concerns, which we're gonna talk about um, a little bit later. Um, copyright issues, um, there have been uh, artists or photographers who have entered um, images into different competitions and one where they really uh, were strictly AI images, uh, potential job losses and so on. So there are some effects that we, we do have to be concerned with. Um, one of them here, uh, man won an art competition in Colorado using AI generated art and started quite a debate. 
the bottom right image there was online, um, artstorefronts.com uh, said they will not accept uh, AI art uh, on their website. So again, uh, as it says there, we're happy to let them build their own business elsewhere. So um, you gotta love the Dutch, uh, I'm Dutch. And in Amsterdam, they just opened the world's first AI generated art gallery. So all the art that you view there and what you see on the screen here uh, is all art um, generated strictly with AI. And as you can see, it, uh, it has its own distinct style. So uh, I don't think anybody would really, uh, really confuse this with, uh, with photography. So uh, next time I get to Amsterdam, I'm certainly gonna check this, this place out because I think it'd be quite fascinating. So, and as I go along here, if anybody has any comments or um, questions, uh, you know, just feel free to ask me. So. Okay, uh, another one. Uh, Steve uh, Port turned me on to this one. Uh, viral Instagram photographer is a confession. His photos are AI generated. And if we look at this next slide, uh, two of these people are actual photographs. Uh, can anybody tell which ones? I can't. And unfortunately, in the article, they didn't say which two were the uh, AI generated uh, or the two actual photographs. But as you can see, um, it does some, some pretty amazing things. Now, these, I think, were strictly done using text text input. So uh, kind of an interesting, interesting thing. Now, this one just came up this week. In fact, this afternoon, I was listening to The View, and um, they were talking about this on The View even. So uh, an artist um, won the prize at the Sony World Photography Awards, and his image was all AI created. And as you can see here, he, he did refuse to take the prize. So there are gonna be some, some ethical issues that we have to be concerned with. Um, when does a photograph uh, that's been run through AI, when does that actually leave photography and become strictly artificial intelligence? So something, you know, that we have to think about. Now, uh, this is a uh, shameless promotion for my son. Uh, I mentioned my son lives in Taiwan and he's a, uh, a musician and artist. Uh, he teaches English in Taiwan, but he started a little company uh, where he combines photography with artificial intelligence. And um, as you can see there, he's been in business since 2047, so um, quite, quite some time. Uh, but what he does, and it's mainly with his, he has a couple of cats, it's mainly photography or photos of his cats that he runs through a program called Stable Diffusion and creates these different images. Um, at break time, I do have on my, I do on my t-shirt, uh, one of his uh, t-shirts with his cat and also on the back of my sweatshirt. So uh, I'll share those if you want to see that image. But uh, in talking with him, he has mentioned, yeah, you know, I, I take the photos, I run them through AI, but it's not done at that point. He still goes back into Photoshop. He thinks they're almost done. To, do a lot of editing, a lot of manipulation okay. on its own. So I'll, I'll um, come down when they're ready. But compared with the person, uh, you know, who entered the uh, the competition with a meeting that's AI generated, um, he's right up front with it. Uh, yes, this is AI generated. So now um, we'll go down the uh, down the rabbit hole a little bit here. There are a lot of applications out there that are strictly AI. Uh, Dali is one, uh, Stable Fusion, Deep Dream, uh, a lot of different ones. And interestingly enough, um, there are little cottage businesses that are now popping up, and that's the bottom right one, where you can actually subscribe to a set of prompts that they'll give you for AI. So you don't even have to think of your own prompts apparently. So uh, I have not bought that, I haven't tried it, but uh, it might be interesting to, uh, to see what it is. But a lot of these programs uh, I played with, and we're gonna have a little 
audience participation a little bit later where some of the members uh, have used some of these uh, these tools also. So uh, There's a website I found, this one was interesting. It's called This Person Does Not Exist. And basically, uh, you can type in a prompt where you describe what the person looks like, and this particular site will generate a person for you. Again, photography, no. Uh, something interesting, yeah, definitely. And again, uh, it makes you wonder about some of the ethical things. Um, I have a feeling that this model is going out and looking on the internet uh, for different images and then just mixing different people's faces together. So, and yes, you can download these if you if you want to use them. So. Okay, another another thing I heard about just last week: um, free to the robotic artist. Uh, not only can you, within computers, uh, create art, uh, they have now developed a robot where you can still type in the same sort of prompts and have the, the robot actually do the painting for you. So these are some, uh, some examples of Frida's work. So. Okay, so what are some of the positive effects of AI? Uh, we talked about some, probably the negative things there. Um, AI can be used to enhance creativity. Um, you probably know I do quite a bit of uh, composite images. And if I'm searching for an idea, sometime I'll type in a prompt into an AI generator just to see what, what they come up with. And then it does kind of spur me um, to say, okay, I can do something like this with my images and kind of uh, mimic some of the creativity that it came up with. Uh, improved efficiency, um, for sure. Um, you know, we can now have AI um, sharpen our images, uh, choose backgrounds, choose the subject in an image and so on. So it has increased um, efficiency for us. Uh, greater accessibility uh, does give people who don't have a lot of, uh, you know, editing skills and so on, a chance to work with some editing, like on their iPhone or something. So, it does increase accessibility, um, diversity, uh, improve quality. We can certainly enhance our images uh, using AI uh, AI applications and also new forms of expression. Uh, you know, there's going to be a whole new genre of art that is strictly uh, AI generated. So there are some positive effects for, for art and photography. Okay, now, uh, one of the things I did was I took a little poll um, with uh, people on 52 frames and just asked about their opinions uh, within um, AI and photography. So, uh, have you ever used AI in your workflow? Um, majority said yes, they have uh, over 60%. And, you know, right now it's pretty hard to, um, to do any photo editing without having some form of AI working with you. So, um, most photographers realize they are using AI in some way. Oops, there we go. Uh, how has it improved your work workflow? Um, Used, I am having a problem reading up there, but uh, image enhancement probably is the biggest one. Uh, and again, most applications that we use today do have AI in some form or another. So, okay, how are you using, how has workflow uh, been affected on your output? Uh, again, um, image selection, uh, efficiency. Uh, notice creativity is quite low. Um, people aren't relying on AI for creativity. Uh, do you think AI is harmful to photography or helpful? Uh, most people feel it's helpful. Now there is some, some harmful effects, but most people think it's uh, helpful. Uh, will it replace photographers in the future? No, uh, that's pretty much the popular belief there. Uh, can it be trusted for creative decisions? No, um, not really. Uh, it kind of does its own thing uh, if you let it. So, And uh, do people think there should be guidelines uh, for AI and photography? Uh, most people feel yes, there should be. And interestingly enough, um, would you pay more for uh, 
AI powered photography tools, most people said no, they, they weren't interested in that. So, so anyway, that was kind of interesting. Now, um, getting down to actual photography and editing and so on, um, this is just a list of some of the software packages that use AI in their processing. Uh, Luminar Neo, um, which I use, uh, probably a lot of people in here use Neo. Uh, I personally use Affinity Photo, uh, Lightroom, Photoshop, uh, Topaz Labs. Uh, all of these have some form of AI built into them that you can use for your, uh, for your processing. Okay, um, no, a couple of examples. I, I bought the, the Topaz package with um, Sharpen, um, Denoise, and Gigapixel. Uh, now that has actually been incorporated into one program, the new application is Topaz Photo AI, which basically combines the Denoise uh, the Sharp and, and the Gigapixel all into one application. Uh, this little statue is something I shot the other day. Uh, we were in Frankfurt, uh, Michigan, or Frankenmuth, Michigan, and I like to just kind of take random images of things that I might be able to use in a composite at some point. So I was just kind of wandering around the shop and took this. Now, in Affinity Photo, if I wanted to isolate that little guy, uh, what I would basically have to, or, I'm sorry, I went one too far. Uh, if I wanted to sharpen, what I'd have to do is, first of all, go to Topaz Sharpen and sharpen the image. And then I'd have to go to Topaz Denoise and Denoise the image. And if I wanted to make that image larger, then I'd have to go into uh, Gigapixel and make it larger. With Topaz AI, it's all basically done in one particular application. So it picks out the subject sharpens if it's needed, uh, deep takes the noise out if it's needed, and if you want, you can also choose the, um, the enlargement uh, like you would do in Gigapixel. So that's uh, Topaz AI. And again, um, you're using your own work and basically just uh, having this particular application uh, help your workflow a little bit, so. Okay, now, uh, same little guy. And many times I like to remove the backgrounds from an image so I can use it in a composite. And this little guy, if I were going to do it in Affinity Photo, um, the first thing I'd have to do is to, oops, I went too far. First thing I'd have to do is with a selection tool, go around and select this little guy. With Luminar Neo is the program I use now for um, the selection. I use it as a plugin. I go to Neo, and what you see on the screen here, it starts out by analyzing the image and tries to pick out a subject. Once it's done that, it highlights uh, what it's working on, what it found. And then it removes it for me. Now, like the example with Chat GPT, where it got the walking across the English Channel wrong. Um, with this particular image, uh, Neo didn't do such a great job. Uh, notice it left the little section down at the bottom left there, uh, left part of the stump, and so on. So I still had to go back in and clean it up in, uh, in Affinity Photo. But it does save me tons of time if I want to remove a background, uh, remove a sky, something like that. Now, another example, uh, this little guy, again, from uh, Frankenmuth, uh, he definitely needs to serve me. But uh, what I did want to do was to remove him. And here you can see I ran it through Luminar Neo, and it did a great job of, of selecting, and it did a great job of removing the, the background. So it doesn't always get it right. Um, even if you're using artificial intelligence, um, it is going to to make some errors occasionally, so. Now, uh, have you ever used AI in your photography? And are you sure? How many of you here think they have not used AI in their photography, anybody? I don't see too many hands, I see one. Okay, good, good. Uh, this image, is Steve here tonight? 
Yeah. Yeah, there he is. Okay, this image was done by Steve. And uh, Jan mentioned that uh, we had a session on uh, using a Zoom session using AI in photography. And what we did was have different people share uh, their images and so on. So this was an image done by Steve. Steve, you want to just maybe chat about that a little bit? Well, on a vacation, I took a day daytime shot uh, there, and uh, I thought, I wonder what this would look like on a super starry night uh, with, with no people around. And so I kind of darkened it down, and uh, then I swapped the sky in for a bold Milky Way bright night and uh, exaggerated a few things and uh, took almost no time at all and came up with something unique. Uh, it, again, uh, in my mind, the key is not pretending uh, that it's something that it's not. It, you know, you need to say uh, this is this is a, a composite or a, or a highly modified uh, picture that I came up with. I'm not going to like. <clears throat> okay, good. Thank you. Okay, uh, these are some other images that uh, we we came up with from the from the Zoom session. So uh, I'm going to have some of the people share um, what they were going for here. Uh, is Joan here? Yeah. Yeah, Joan, go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, went through or had my... Uh, Speak a little louder. Um, take out some clothes and stuff and then I wanted to see how I would look with paint and blue paint and then I just, uh, I think it was photo leak. It's on your phone and they took the picture that I fed in and came up with these composites. So I like the astronaut um, and uh, the cowboy kind of look. So that was kind of fun. Yeah, I, I think it was Facetune, uh, Joan, is what we have up there. Uh, Facetune? Okay. Yeah, so. Maybe that sent me the um, Okay, cool. Thank you. So again, this is taking an original photo and then running it through an AI application to alter it in some way. So, so if I come up with pink and blue hair, this is where I got it. That's great. I love it. <laughs> okay, uh, Larry. Larry's here, I think, isn't he? Yes. The, I did these in uh, Deep Dream, and I'm showing the before and after of, of what the AI came up with. So there's a nice picture. The second picture is a nice one for me uh, as a photographer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really like the, the ship. It was a sailing ship, and AI came up. It was just a beautiful, beautiful picture. I just love that picture. But not at all like <coughs> the original. Right, not at all like the original. Now the, the top two there on the right, that looks more like the original. Mm -hmm. What you have to, what I've had noticed, you have to watch out for hands that are in the picture, original picture, because they might have six fingers, <laughs> et cetera, so you have to, even the photographer there, his uh, left hand has only got three fingers. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes uh, the ear will be displaced, so when you get done, you think, oh, this is really good, oh, this is really good, and then you study it. Uh -oh. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, yeah, and AI is amazing. Look at it, got the ship to tack and go the other direction. So yeah. that was that was good, yeah. Okay, all, all set there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Every carrier. <laughs> Photography. The book covers 
is when they charge, they were charging between three hundred, seven hundred, thousand dollars for a picture. And if I like it, we bought it. And I found out I could probably um, come up with some pictures on AI. And so I put in like the description of one of the main characters, which is the girl on the top left. And um, what it does is you you insert like certain certain eye color, hair color, what you want the background to be, and then it generates four different pictures. You can pick one and have it redo it or whatever. And so that's uh, that's kind of what we're playing with with that. Um, the girl on the top right is kind of what we have in mind for this next book. Her name is Liz, and she has pink hair. So um, we kind of liked that, but we're still working on it. Um, in one of his recent books, The Log Cabin, that belongs to the um, main character of the book, uh, it gets uh, blown up. So um, I was trying to uh, find a really cool log cabin, and I asked it for 10-foot carved bears out in front standing up. Well, that didn't exactly happen, as you see on the bottom left, but it's a good start. And since um, we have a house up on Lake Superior, I thought, oh, let's see what it does with um, monster waves and pine trees and uh, wild storms. So that's kind of what that came up with. And then the bottom right, I wanted it to create a steam pump coffee espresso maker. So. That's how that came up. I really like that. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of our story for this so far. Still oh. lying. Okay, great. Thank you. I want that espresso maker. Okay. <laughs> okay, I I found a new application uh, a couple weeks ago called Catbird. And again, this is one that's strictly uh, typing in a prompt. So I just thought, well, let's try asking for a large rabbit driving a train in a tunnel at night with a storm. And the interesting thing with Catbird is that it uses many of these different AI applications to get its images. So this is the first set it gave me uh, with that prompt. That's the second set it gave me with that prompt. Uh, and as you can see, again, uh, some of them have missed the point. I don't see a, uh, a train in that bottom, uh, well, I do the bottom right one, I guess, but uh, kind of got carried away. Here's another set it gave me, uh, getting more into the anime type characters, uh, more cartoon type characters. And keep in mind, this was just with one prompt. No, would you enter it in a photo competition? No, but it's kind of fun for what you might need it for. Um, I could maybe see using it for a background and a composite in some way, but, uh, and still more, all from one application. Now, uh, Larry mentioned uh, Deep Dream Generator, and is Becky here? Oh, Becky didn't make it. Oh, okay. Um, this is my favorite, and I know it's uh, Becky's favorite. So I'll, I'll speak for Becky here, I guess. Um, these are some images that Becky has done with Deep Dream Generator. The first early versions of Deep Dream, um, what you would do is you would take an original photo, load it into deep dream generator and then combine it with some other photo or some other drawing whatever so these are all different images that uh, becky has put together and uh, i was hoping she would talk about them but uh, anyway um let's see you use uh, 
deep dream generator quite a bit too, don't you? Yeah. Okay. So that was the original. Um, this is my daughter, by the way, in the, the middle uh, photo there. And again, these are just original photos that Becky um, loaded in and then combined with other images. Now, you can also, the newer versions of, or the new version of Deep Dream Generator now starts to use some of the AI prompts also. So this top set of images, uh, this was my original image. And I loaded that into Deep Dream Generator and then I asked it to turn me into a pirate and a ghost pirate that's kind of scary, <laughs> okay? And this was the first image it came up with. So it took my original image and using AI came up with that. Then I said to regenerate it, it came up with this one. And then I said to regenerate it again and it came up with this one. So again, based on, uh, on this original image, that's what it came up with. Now, uh, that was combining an AI prompt with an original image. The other thing you can do now, just like in some of the other um, AI applications, is you can do strictly text prompts. So what I asked it to do was to come up with this, <clears throat> excuse me, come up with a scene with a pirate ship in a storm at night. And these are the two different backgrounds it came up with, with the ship, the waves and the sky. And then I decided I was just going to make a couple composites out of those. So I popped um, these two guys into this one and uh, those two into this, this bottom one. All three of them there, aren't there? Yeah. So again, um, this is using the original image. Uh, this is just having to strictly create the background and then I did a composite from it. So. Now, um, going a little further again with Deep Dream Generator, and by the way, Deep Dream Generator is free. Um, when you first start out using it, you get, I guess they're called PowerPoints or credits, something like that. And I think you start out by getting only like a few, maybe 25, but the more you use it, you build up more credits. So uh, right now, anytime I log in, I have like 70 credits. And depending what I do with it, uh, I might use five credits, 10 credits, whatever. If I come back in a couple hours, it's regenerated again, back up to 70. So these images that you see here uh, are strictly done with a prompt. Uh, this is Deep Dream Generator. And what I said I wanted was a scene with Nova Scotia, a fishing shack, a sunset, and in honor of Randy uh, Nyhoff. I tried Randy birds, but it didn't come out. I had to see, say, seagulls to get it. So, so anyway, uh, these are the two images that Deep Dream Generator gave me. Uh, and then I wanted to compare with a different program. So I also used Dolly a little bit, and I gave Dolly the same prompt: uh, Nova Scotia fishing shed, sunset seagulls. And these are the four images it gave me here. Now, the find, thing I find interesting uh, is that they're basically the same sort of composition. Uh, and again, I'm sure the model goes out and looks for images from Nova Scotia, and uh, that's pretty much the, uh, the stereotype image, I guess. So, so that, again, was just strictly um, done with, uh, with prompts. So. No, I lost my mouse here. Where did it go? Oh, interesting. I see it up there, but I don't see it down here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, to end with, uh, this time I called on uh, Arlo Guthrie uh, to speak to us for a second, so. Hey there, photographers, let me spread the news. There's a new tool in town, and it's got some major use. It's called AI, and it's a game changer for sure. It can make your photos pop and make your creativity soar. Now some of you might say, I don't need no machine. My skills are already sharp, my photos are clean. But let me tell you, this AI is the real deal. It can help you create photos that'll make you squeal. It can correct colors, sharpen lines, and more. It can make your photos look like they've never looked before. 
It can even help you find the beauty in every place and bring out the best in every person's face. So don't be afraid to try something new. AI can help you create art that's fresh and true. So, grab your camera and give it a go. With AI by your side, your photos will steal the show. Okay, there you go. So, any questions, comments, um, anything at all? So.